It says the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, knew what Israel wanted to do. And, you know, there are generally three different seasons. There's Chronos time, which is chronological time. It's not strategic about chronological time. You don't sense anything strategic. You don't sense the babies being born. You know, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 2008, 2000, January, February, and then you go into what's called Kairos time, which is strategic time or opportune time when you sense the baby's about to be born. You sense, get that room ready. You know, before my son was born, I, t I woke up at 2 in the morning and I started getting the baby, I started getting the room ready. I was ripping out the walls, the carpet. I sensed enlargement. I sensed the baby about to be born. And then you go, it's, it's called, what's play room, which is the fullness or the completion thereof. Now what it really boils down to is you just have to outlast your contradiction. So Joseph has a dream. That, you know, he's going to be a big cheese and he's going to serve the Lord. Now he finds himself in the dungeon. But his season changed so quick where God told Joseph, shave and get new clothes on. It's time you're coming out. So I'm telling you, last week or a week and a half ago, it was 50 degrees out. This, this last week, it was 20 degrees out. I am telling you, thus saith the Lord, your season can change that quick. That's how quick it is. God told Abraham and Sarah, he said, at the set time, yeah. you will have a child. And Abraham, you know, he goes and hires Hagar, the bondwoman. And now, now this is important. A premature birth is as dangerous as a birth that goes overdue. So you have got to wait on the Lord and you have got to pull the trigger and not hesitate once God says go for it. God told Moses in Exodus 24, he said, come up on the mountain and be there. And then I'll give you the tablets of stone or then I'll give you instruction. It says, after six days, the glory of the Lord fell. But we have got to wait upon the Lord through contemplation, through stillness, through meditation. Now listen, meditation is not a new age term. God told Joshua, meditate on my word day and night, and I will give you good success. At the same time, it says in the book of Amos, they ripped open the womb of the child that they might enlarge themselves. In other words, they tried to make the baby become born before the due date. And God told Elijah, he said, let us not hesitate. The place we are now dwelling is too small we have got to build a bigger place. And I love this dude, Caleb, 80 years old. Caleb says, I am as strong as the day you call me. Let me go up at once and possess that mountain. Amen. So I just want you to stand to your feet. Give Jesus the greatest. God bless you. Give Jesus the greatest. Come on. He's got to be a shepherd. church, the called out ones, are not behind, but they're ahead of your people. Father, church is not something we go to. We are the church. Lord, you told Jacob in Genesis when the heavens opened, when he became afraid that God was in him, and he said, how awesome is God in this place? So church is not something from Sunday to morning, from 10 to 1 or 10 to 2. Church is not something with a four walls or a midweek Bible study, but we are the church. Come on, church, give Jesus the greatest God offering in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My God, thank Holy Spirit, come with greater passion. Hey, come on, Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, greater demonstration, greater outpouring. Father, we thank you. You are resting on your people. In this hour, to not only to know Christ, but to make Christ known, and we will not, we will never fulfill the great commission till we fulfill the great commandment. We will never go till we sit and we're so endued with the Holy Spirit. We're so immersed. We are so. Oh my God! When God comes on you, you know it was never Peter's fault in the Book of Acts. 
when he was out in the sun and someone got healed in a shadow. Peter was just in the sun, the S-O-N, and someone got healed because he was so immersed in the presence and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Give Jesus a clap. Wow. I'm just going to teach for five to seven minutes. Wow. I'm not a Bible teacher, but several years ago, I love the prophetic camp. I love the prophetic stream. But one of the bishops on the island started to mentor my life, started to father my life. And he started to teach me to build revelation upon the, of the Word of God and to draw out of the Word of God. So what I, what I started doing through radio ministry was teaching through the Word of God, through revelations, Ephesians 1, the eyes of your heart being enlightened, the eyes of your understanding. So I just want to sh just share a platform now. For the sake of time, I'll, I'll just give the scriptures out, the chapters, the verses. I wouldn't suggest people to open their Bible up. But if you buy the CD, DVD, whatever they're selling, you'll know where to turn. And uh, again, I just believe it's the greatest day for the church. I really do. Yes. And I was watching a movie once, Apollo 13 on television. Yes. And um, at the end of the movie, they were waiting for the spaceship to come back to Earth. And they were all nervous. Saying, my God, is the spaceship going to make it back? And they were in the control room, like one of those NASA type rooms. And they were all nervous. And they looked at the head guy, and they, they says, what are we going to do? Is the ship going to make it? And, he, and I'm not a movie watcher. I, I don't have the patience. He says, he says, men, of all due respect, I believe this is going to be our finest hour. Yeah. Amen. And church, without all due respect, I really believe it. I would be here. I believe this is the church's greatest, finest yeah. hour. Amen. And again, revival is not something we go to. Revival is something we are. Church is not something we go to. We are the church. Yeah. Jacob says that his life became a gate that people could come in and out of to get to the kingdom. So I'm just going to teach Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. John said, Jesus, I baptize you with water, but one is coming who is mightier than I, of whom I am not worthy to untie the shoelaces out of his Nikes or his sandals. They didn't have Nikes back then, they had sandals. <laughs> Now check this out. He said, this Jesus will come and baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I believe there's a fresh baptism coming on the people of God of the Holy Spirit and fire. When you are so baptized, the baptismal of the Holy Spirit, when you are so inebriated with the Holy Spirit, when he's not only on you, but when he's in you and on you, he comes to take residence, which is called the abode of God. When God comes, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in your house. When you are so baptized with the Holy Spirit, you are so rude for the ordinary. You cannot function as a normal human being. When God so treasures your life, when the Holy Spirit comes and He so wounds you and wrecks you, you cannot function as a normal human being. You are now living in two realms. I told you I couldn't teach. You are now living in two realms. It's heaven over earth. So when the Holy Spirit comes, this dunamis power of the Holy Spirit, it wrecks you so much. John chapter 3, the, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John chapter 14, verse 16, fire. 17. And I will pray the Father. He will give you another helper. His name's the Paracletos. He is the Comforter. He will guide you into all truth and bring to remembrance all things that I have said. So it's not only what the yes. Spirit said, it's what the Spirit is saying. Yes. And John says we have got to hear what the Spirit said yes. and what the Spirit is saying. He says, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, that, you may, that He may abide with you forever. You know, we never pray for the Holy Spirit to come because He said He would never leave. We never pray for finances because God says you're already blessed. But we can pray for an increase of the Holy Spirit because it's line upon line.
precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. So there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. But then listen to me, there's a continual infilling. It says, be ye filled with the Spirit, or be ye continually filled. It says, the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. John 14, 26, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said. John 16, verse 7, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come. But if I depart, I will send him. John 16, 13, but when he, the Spirit of truth, comes... He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but wherever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. How many people really dig the Holy Ghost? Come on, man. This Holy Spirit will so rock your world. You will never be changed. I believe the third person of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe the Holy Spirit is not only the mis- the most misunderstood yes. and the most cloudy, but I believe pastors like Benny Hinn several decades ago started to write books like Good Morning Holy Spirit yes. and started to awaken people yes. where Jesus said, hey, for the most part, my ministry is over. I went to the cross. It is finished. Yes. But yes. the disciple says, Jesus, you can't go. He says, no, you don't understand this. Unless I go, he can't come. So Jesus goes up through the ascension and now the Holy Spirit which is the essence of God is the personality of heaven it's the very pores that goes through the believers of Jesus Christ amen, amen. come on church amen. now listen I want to I want to just share two minutes about the baptism of fire come on I get less out of breath I play full court ball three times a week at Stony Brook University with division one athletes and I get less out of breath. <laughs> he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Yes. I believe this fire gives you such a passion. It's the coals of fire. Yes. In the book of Acts, it said they were of one mind and one accord. And the sound as of a rushing mighty wind came. And there were tongues of fire. And one tongue sat on each of them. Now listen to me. You have your own flame. There is a flame with your name. There is a flame with your name. There is a flame with your name. You have got to steward 